Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve best time to buy and sell stock to Leco number 122. This question is actually really, really cool. Okay, so we're given an integer array called prices where each price is at I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. Now each day you may decide to buy and or sell the stock, but you can only hold at most one share of the stock at any time. However, you are allowed to buy it and then immediately sell it on the same day. And like the first version of this problem, you want to find and return the max maximum profit that you can achieve. Okay, so this is interesting. Let's diagnose this. So 715364. Well, it's at seven, it goes down to one, you can't really make any money over here. But if you buy it at one, and then you sell it at five, well, you can make a profit of four from that. Okay, but the stock is at five, it goes down to three, if you then buy it at three, and then you sell it at six, you can make an additional three from that. And so you'd have four plus your three. Okay, but the stock is at six, and then it goes down down to four, you could buy it four, but there's really nowhere to sell it. So in total, you'd get your five minus one, which is four, plus your six minus three, which is three. So you'd get four plus three, which is equal to seven. Okay, so let's say we were given this example here, and you'll notice I've drawn the bare bones of a graph here. So we have the price on the y-axis and the day, or basically the index on the x-axis. Okay, so it starts at a price of seven. It goes down a little bit over to a price of six. After that, it goes down a bit more over to a price of four. It goes down a lot over to the price of one. Maybe this stock was Intel right now at the time of writing this. Uh, oh man, they are in for some real trouble. And then it goes up to a a price of five here. Okay, so what you would do is, well, you could just ignore all of this stuff because you're not going to make any profit in this region. If you bought here and you sold anywhere, that's not going to help. But you would want to buy over here at a price of one. So we'll say we bought at a price of one. It goes up to five. Okay, you don't want to sell it quite yet because it actually goes up to a price of eight and then it's going to fall back down to a price of three. Okay, so if you were to sell the stock here at eight, well, then you'd make a a profit of your selling minus your buying price. So that's going to make eight minus one, which is equal to seven. That is the vertical distance between these two points here. Now we're keeping track of the most amount of profit that you could get here. So we'll say our current profit is seven. Let's try and make some more. Okay, so here it was at eight, it dropped down to three, it's going to go back up to six. Okay, so you'd probably want to buy over here because it was down and then went back up, but it's going to fall back down to four. And so before it fell, you would want to make a profit of six minus three, which is equal to three. So we can make an additional three. That means that total we can make 10 now. And this is the end of our array. We can't make anything in this space because we would have bought it for six, sold it for four, and that would have been a loss. Okay, so the idea here is that, well, you would ignore all of this region because you're basically just losing money along here. You wouldn't do that. You would buy down here because it's a low point. You know, the traditional logic of buy low, sell high. That's the idea. So we buy when it's low, when it goes up, okay, we're going to see if it goes up again. Yes, it did. And then it actually goes down. So you'd want to sell at the highest point and buy at the low point. You're looking for a low point where you can buy and then seeing how high it will get. And then you would sell at that. You'd make that profit and then you would do this again. We would ignore as it goes down, but then it starts to go back up. So this would be a buying point. It goes up here. Does it go up anymore? No, it actually falls. And so you would sell here, make an additional three, we would ignore the going down. And if it were to go back up again, well, then you would buy down here and you'd sell at the very highest point over there and rinse and repeat. Okay, now let's make a nice algorithm out of this. So to do that, we're going to need two variables called low and high, you'd want to buy in the low points and sell in the high points. Now for now, we'll just initialize them both to be the first value of seven. And we'll also get an index i that's going to traverse through the array. Now what we do is compare these two numbers here, we can see that the stock price actually gets lower. It's getting lower, so we'd want to ignore this region. We'd also want to ignore this because it got lower and it got lower to here. However, at this next step here, it gets higher. So what that means is we have found a low point. We found a nice spot to buy, which is going to equal the price of one. And now we want to search for where we'd want to sell it. Well, the price goes up. Okay, cool. Does it keep going up? Yes, it actually goes up to eight. Okay, does it keep going up? No, it's going to fall. And so we found a 
sell point here or a high value of eight. So if we're selling at eight and we bought it at one, well, then we're going to make seven here. At the beginning, we would have actually initialized a variable called profit or max profit, the total amount of money we can get. So, so far we can make seven. Now we are going to search for a new spot to buy. Well, the stock price went down. Okay. Does it keep going down? No, it is going to increase over here. So we found a good spot to buy, which is going to set low to be three. We're now searching for a good spot to sell it. So over here it goes up and then it goes back down. Okay. So we'd want to buy at three. We'd want to sell at six. That's going to make a profit of six minus three equal to three. And so we could add three profit to this, get a sum of 10, and we would search for a new spot to buy. We'd see we want to buy over here. However, there is actually no ability to sell over here. And so we'd return our total max profit at the end, which would equal 10. Okay, so this algorithm would have a time complexity of big O of n. It's linear because we're just moving i through the array. And the space complexity of this is going to be completely constant. We're really just using a couple variables. Okay, so let's code this up. Now we're going to use while loops for this. So we're going to get i is equal to zero. We'll get low is equal to prices at zero to just initialize that to be the first number. And high is going to be initialized to be the same thing. Profit, which is going to be our max profit we can achieve. Well, so far we can get zero. And we'll just get a quick n is equal to the length of the numbers. Okay, then what we're going to do here, the code is a little bit weird. So stick with me. While i is less than n minus one, we need this to be n minus one, not n, because we're going to be doing stuff where we look at the next number. So we can only run this up until say here so that we can look over to the next number. You wouldn't want an out of bounds error where you have i is here and then you look out of bounds. So it's going to be while i is less than n minus one. And we're going to split this into two pieces. This is going to be where we look where to buy the stock. Okay, so we'll do that in a second, but we'd find where to buy. And then as you'd probably guess, we would look where we want to sell it. And then from there, we can actually make some money. Okay, so let's look where to buy. You want to ignore ignore until it starts going up. So it goes down from seven to one, and then it starts going from one to five. Okay, so you want to find this point, which is the point where the next number is increasing. So what we're going to write here is while i is less than n minus one, we need that for the same reason, and prices at i is greater than or equal to prices at i plus one. What we're going to do here is i plus equals one, and at the end of this, we're going to set low equal to prices at i. So let's break this down. Why while the price is at i is bigger than or equal to prices at i plus one. So while the price on the left is bigger than or equal to the price that's on the right, we just want to keep incrementing i. So that says ignore all the stuff as the price is going down. The second that it starts to go up, which would be right here, you would have i here, and then you would set low to equal that amount of one. Okay, so that's where to buy. And so really clever, you could basically just flip this, which is where we want to sell. So where you would want to sell is you still need this condition, but it's going to be where prices at i is less than or equal to prices at i plus one, while the price on the left is less than or equal to the price on the right. Well, that means that as the price is increasing, we're basically just incrementing i here. And then at the point where this breaks, that means that your price started to go down, you would have wanted to sell at that high point there. And so we'll set high equal to prices at i at this point. Okay, so you go down and find where to buy, you go up and you find where to sell. And so your profit is going to go up by the amount of high minus low. Now this looks like it's a bad time complexity because you have lots of nested loops, but they're all just regarding i and you're actually never decrementing i, you're never kind of resetting it backwards. So all of this stuff here, it's really just working together to push i through the array. And so at the end of this, you can return your profit. And this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n for the reason we just discussed. And it has a constant space complexity. And so Sorry, I called this nums, but this should actually be prices. Okay, if you are to run that, then that's going to pass your cases. Submit, it's going to pass all your test cases very quickly. So here's all the code. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was. Also, check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already. And have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.